Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 15 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 15 to 20. Of course, mushroom picking is associated with the countryside. But if you haven't got a car, your local park can be a great place to start. There are usually a range of habitats where mushrooms grow, such as playing fields and wooded areas. But you need to be there first thing in the morning, as there's likely to be a lot of competition. Not just from people, but wildlife too. The deer often get the best mushrooms in my local park. If you're a complete beginner, I wouldn't recommend going alone or relying on photos in a book, even the one I've written. There are some really good phone apps for identifying mushrooms, but you can't always rely on getting a good signal in the middle of a wood. If possible, you should go with a group led by an expert. You'll stay safe and learn a lot that way. Conservation is a really important consideration, and you must follow a few basic rules. You should never pick all the mushrooms in one area. Collect only enough for your own needs. Be very careful that you don't trample on young mushrooms or other plants. And make sure you don't pick any mushrooms that are endangered and protected by law. There's been a decline in some varieties of wild mushrooms in this part of the country. Restaurants are becoming more interested in locally sourced food like wild mushrooms. But the biggest problem is that so many new houses have been built in this area in the last 10 years. And more water is being taken from rivers and reservoirs because of this and mushroom habitats have been destroyed. Anyway, a word of advice on storing mushrooms. Collect them in a brown paper bag and as soon as you get home, put them in the fridge. They'll be fine for a couple of days, but it's best to cook them as soon as possible. After washing them really carefully first, of course. So, everybody knows what a mushroom tastes like, right? Well, you'll be surprised by the huge variety of wild mushrooms there are. Be adventurous. They're great in so many dishes. Stir-fries, risottos, pasta. But just be aware that some people can react badly to certain varieties, so it's a good idea not to eat huge quantities to begin with. OK, so now I'm going to show you a few examples of poisonous. Of course, mushroom picking is associated with the countryside, but if you haven't got a car, your local park can be a great place to start. There are usually a range of habitats where mushrooms grow, such as playing fields and wooded areas. But you need to be there first thing in the morning, as there's likely to be a lot of competition. Not just from people, but wildlife too. The deer often get the best mushrooms in my local park. If you're a complete beginner, I wouldn't recommend going alone or relying on photos in a book, even the one I've written. 
There are some really good phone apps for identifying mushrooms, but you can't always rely on getting a good signal in the middle of a wood. If possible, you should go with a group led by an expert. You'll stay safe and learn a lot that way. Conservation is a really important consideration and you must follow a few basic rules. You should never pick all the mushrooms in one area. Collect only enough for your own needs. Be very careful that you don't trample on young mushrooms or other plants. And make sure you don't pick any mushrooms that are endangered and protected by law. There's been a decline in some varieties of wild mushrooms in this part of the country. Restaurants are becoming more interested in locally sourced food like wild mushrooms. But the biggest problem is that so many new houses have been built in this area in the last 10 years. And more water is being taken from rivers and reservoirs because of this and mushroom habitats have been destroyed. Anyway, a word of advice on storing mushrooms. Collect them in a brown paper bag and as soon as you get home, put them in the fridge. They'll be fine for a couple of days, but it's best to cook them as soon as possible. After washing them really carefully first, of course. So, everybody knows what a mushroom tastes like, right? Well, you'll be surprised by the huge variety of wild mushrooms there are. Be adventurous. They're great in so many dishes. Stir fries, risottos, pasta. But just be aware that some people can react badly to certain varieties, so it's a good idea not to eat huge quantities to begin with. OK, so now I'm going to show you a few examples of poison. Background If you're preparing to take the IELTS test, you're not alone. Over 2 million people all over the world take the test each year. A knowledge of English is increasingly important for people who want to enter the higher education or work in countries where English is the first language, and IELTS is widely recognized by universities and colleges, professional bodies, employers, immigration authorities and other government agencies. Academic and General Training Tests There are two versions of IELTS, Academic and General Training or GT. When you enroll, you can choose which version you want to take. You should take IELTS academic if you want to study in higher education, for example, on an undergraduate or postgraduate course at a university where the teaching is in English. You should take the general training version if you intend to live and work in an English-speaking country and need to show the migration authorities that you have the required level of English. Your teacher can advise you on the version which is appropriate for you or you can contact the organization you intend to apply to and find out which one they require. The test. There are four parts to the test, listening, reading, writing and speaking, and you must take them all. The total test time is two hours and 45 minutes. The tests of listening and speaking are the same for all candidates but the tests of reading and writing are different depending on whether you chose the academic or general versions. You do the listening, reading and writing tests on the same day, and usually the speaking test is done a few days before or after the other components. Scoring IELTS assesses your language knowledge and skills and gives you a band score from 1 to 9 in each of the four parts of the test, and also an overall band score from 1 to 9 for the whole exam, which is an average of the scores for each part. There is no pass or fail in IELTS because the college, university, or organization you're applying to will tell you the band score you need to achieve. IELTS Band Scores Band 9, Expert User 
has fully operational command of the language. Appropriate, accurate and fluent with complete understanding. Band 8, very good user. Has fully operational command of the language with only occasional unsystematic inaccuracies and inappropriancies. Misunderstandings may occur in unfamiliar situations. Handles complex detailed argumentation well. Band 7, good user. Has operational command of the language, though with occasional inaccuracies, inappropriaces, and misunderstandings in some situations. Generally handles complex language well and understands detailed reasoning. Band 6, competent user. Has generally effective command of the language despite some inaccuracies, inappropriaces, and misunderstandings. Can use and understand fairly complex language, particularly in familiar situations. Band 5, modest user. Has partial command of the language, coping with overall meaning in most situations, though is likely to make many mistakes. Should be able to handle basic communication in own field. Band 4, limited user. Basic competence is limited to familiar situations. Has frequent problems in understanding and expression. Is not able to use complex language. Band 3. Extremely limited user conveys and understands only general meaning in very familiar situations. Frequent breakdowns in communication occur. Band 2. Intermittent user. No real communication is possible except for the most basic information using isolated words or short formulae in familiar situations and to meet immediate needs. Has great difficulty understanding spoken and written English. Band 1, non-user. Essentially has no ability to use the language beyond possibly a few isolated words. Band 0, did not attempt the test no accessible information provided. 